Good morning, Open Source Summit Europe. It is a pleasure to be here with you all today in this beautiful city of Vienna, home to over 50 different musical composers over the years. Now, symphonies are a unique combination of art, math, and emotion that can provide a framework for expression. It's intended to be communal and shared, much like open sources. And what I'm going to explore with you all today is how elements of technology and security mirror the structure of a symphony that allow us to reason about the next innovation wave on a rising security tide. Now, I recognize that not everyone has an equal understanding of what a symphony is, so let's get everyone on the same sheet of music. A symphony is an elaborate musical composition. It's like an architecture and technology and that the details must be developed to work together in concert. It's patterned, it contains repeatable movements and elements. And in symphonies today, they have four, Sonata Allegro, Andante, Scherzo, and comes back again with another Sonata Allegro. So I'm going to propose, to a, theory, uh, propose a theory to you all today. And that much like security and technology, symphonies are linear. They're, they're designed to evolve, to continuously be developed and improved. And they have to be, because as we learn and discover more in technology and as we innovate, we must abstract, pattern, and apply security principles to these new and emerging technologies. Each movement serves a purpose in the symphony, much like we see with DevOps and cloud computing. And Sorry. Movements also includes times of speed and force, as well as times of quiet and reflection. Similarly, we see rapid innovation and change, like with artificial intelligence along the hype cycle, and then the trough of disillusionment that comes when we realize AI isn't quite all it's cracked up to be. Symphonies always have a dance number. Um, not going to dance, be embarrassing for all of us. <laughs> but within technology and especially in security, how we progress and how we modernize and integrate security into systems and applications is a dance between usability and risk tolerance. These movements can be broken down even further to the measures and the notes that allow us to create rhythm, melody, and harmony. But playing a C note or a B flat it doesn't quite work the same. You don't get the full experience of the whole piece. So in security and technology, we need to be able to unlock potential through specific capabilities and features that aren't alone entirely useful because we need individuals such as yourselves to apply these specific features and capabilities, integrate them together against a valid use case so we can create solutions that actually solve real world problems. So let's begin. Our first movement is a Sonata Allegro. This is where our theme is introduced, it's developed, it's refined. It's also where we begin to find our rhythm or the constant that exists throughout the piece. So I'm proposing today that our theme is access control and verification. Now access control predates technology. Verification and enforcement on the other hand, that's relatively more recent. Before the dawn of the internet, we relied on locks and keys. However, as systems became more interconnected, access control mechanisms needed verification. And in the 1960s, the first operating system was developed with an access control isolation mechanism designed to verify declared access control. Prior to this innovation, most access control methods within the operating system lacked any kind of substantial verification mechanism, allowing heritage processes, in some cases, to completely take over. Not so good. Digitizing military data classification systems into the operating system allowed for the development of access control lists and mandatory access control to work in concert so that we can validate classification levels and categories of objects prior to granting that level of access. Now, our rhythm here is probably a little bit of a stretch, but I assure you it's going to make a lot of sense. Rhythm is the constant tempo throughout the piece, and our rhythm is that security is communal. We can look to the Rainbow series, and in particular, the Orange Book for establishing part of this. The Orange Book published a common framework to set expectations of what secure technology looked like for governments to be able to acquire it. It opened the door for equal understanding about system properties that impact security outcomes, making security communal through that publishing pro process and available for common use. The Rainbow Series was a collaborative development between the US government and industry at the time that they were developed, bringing together a diverse array of experiences and considerations from those different backgrounds to develop a framework so we can evaluate security capabilities of technology. 
The Rainbow Series and the Orange Book are still referenced today in one form or another and have served as the basis of modern security principles that we apply to technology, making them and each iteration after of these security principles communal, much like open source. And indeed, we begin to see the rise of open source around this time, extending our rhythm to state that it also has to be transparent and open. However, there's an interesting byproduct that happened around this time period when this operating system was being developed. It's a precursor to a law that was formulated by Eric Raymond in 1999. When the Multics operating systems was being developed in the 1960s, the government actually set a practice of compiling from source so that they could inspect every single line of code as a method of building assurance and understanding of the software so that they can form the basis of trust in its use. Coined Linus's law, it creates the basis that in order for us to identify potential flaws and vulnerabilities, we need to perform due diligence. When the code and the technology is open, it allows us to assess the state of security against what our expectations are for it. We've defined access control and verification as our theme. We've developed transparent and communal open security through a common framework as our rhythm. Now we're ready to begin the second movement on Dante. Now, Andante is a moderately slow movement, and for us, it's where our symphony begins to introduce some innovation canons, or nuances, that begin to establish the next iteration of security and technology, and it's here where our melody is first introduced. Now, a canon is a form of compositional technique in music. It describes a method to achieve a, des a desired specific outcome, often leveraging melody and imitations of melody at a specified duration thereafter. It creates a framework that is repeatable and reusable. You'll hear, there, hear those terms a lot. During this period of development, the Linux operating system leveraged the existing Unix discretionary access control model and set security policies for objects by the owner of the object, allowing them to effectively declare their own security at their own discretion. Linux security, however, would have a lot more coming to it. In response to a variety of security projects under development within Linux, the Linux security module framework was introduced to provide support for security models that permitted narrowly scoped access control without requiring substantial complexity to be introduced into Linux in order to support multiple models native in the kernel. This innovation canon, the principle by which the Linux kernel constrained new security features, allowed for the creation of SE Linux, AppArmor, Smack, and other LSMs. And while they're all different in their security approaches, they combine access control methods to create layers of security through concepts like type enforcement and role-based access control. They also incorporated multi-level security, which I discussed previously with the data classification systems of the Multics operating system in the 1960s. One key benefit of this design and a core principle within the cloud native community is that it doesn't pick the best security model because we recognize that security outcomes are actually unique to the adopter. They have to have the flexibility to select solutions that will actually fit their needs. And Linux practiced the pattern of security enhancements as a collection of capabilities that could be arranged together for the desired effect instead of as a monolithic security architecture. This might sound familiar because we use this pattern today in the cloud native community. When we design application solutions, it's simpler and often easier to define specific capabilities that can be reused and arranged across an architecture, allowing us to horizontally scale our applications as needed and increase the overall resilience of the system in which they're applied. These microservices allow us to break down the complexity of large systems into finite, granular components that are far easier to reason about. We move interactions to APIs and define a clear boundary for security, a consistent mechanism of information exchange that reduces the variability in security control effectiveness at the boundary where that access control can be challenged and then verified. It allows us to create independent capabilities that can be developed faster against known interactions. Now let's take a brief intermission to talk about what exactly is cloud native. Cloud native is a series of technology practices that embody characteristics of these early innovation canons. They combine not only system design constructs, but also development methodologies that permit systems to operate nearly agnostic of the environment for which they are deployed. By design, cloud native affords opportunities to create micro boundaries for security that can be reused and reinforced. And this provides us with the melody of our security symphony, loosely coupled, declarative, observable, and transparent. Through loose coupling, 
Through loose coupling, we can reduce the risk presented in monolithic interdependencies, allowing high velocity changes to occur with unanticipated changes into those environments. By declaring configuration policy and deployments, we can compare the actual state or ex compare the expected state with the actual state and take steps to remediate, often through a simple redeployment, which can happen fairly quickly. In making applications observable, it allows us to understand their current state and performance without interfering with the operations of those systems or security of them so we can exfiltrate logs and traces. By ensuring their transparency, we more readily scrutinize how they work so we can understand where flaws in design may introduce security vulnerabilities, collaborate on fixes, and improve the security posture through mutual understanding, at least in theory. We have the initial security principles, but cloud-native technologies didn't exist quite yet. So what happened that allowed us to make the leap from traditional security into cloud-native security? Well, in the late 2000s, a critical movement was spinning up that would directly influence the security community, whether they knew it or not. You see, the security community was incredibly focused on operational security and runtime security, because that is where true risk actually became fully exploitable. The DevOps movement, however, focused on people, processes, and technology in a way that empowered streamlining efficiencies, allowing engineers to move sufficiently faster. And in security, we adapted DevOps to DevSecOps and the cyber risk framework. You see, system thinking methodologies actually align with proactive practices to identify risk and apply security controls to protect against it in our systems. Amplified feedback loops allow us to detect and respond to incidents a lot faster and actually reach out to the developers and engineers that are impacted by this. Continuous experimentation and learning allows changes in recovery to occur and allows us to return to a known good state that is continuously improving. These concepts, practiced by organizations through their products, allowed engineers working in open source to integrate them into open source projects and began allowing us to have a rapid development in the open source and cloud native ecosystems that created harmony between previously distinct and separate communities, allowing engineers to converge security with novel and emerging technical capabilities like namespaces, and more importantly, user namespaces which create an isolated view of system resources. It creates the technology equivalent of a solo, allowing a process to fully execute with privileges inside the user namespace, but not outside of it. It encapsulates access control granularity by isolating and decoupling processes with less overhead, closely resembling concepts we see in microservice architectures, paving the way for containerization technologies like Docker and Kubernetes which advance these concepts and promote the idea that good engineering practices and design can actually lead us to good security outcomes. And we arrive here today. In the fourth movement, another Sonata Allegro, here we have our rhythm, our melody, and our harmony defined and ready to be revisited on the next wave of rapid innovation. So let's recap. Our security symphony theme is about controlling access and actually verifying that it works. Our rhythm says security is communal and open. Our melody says we can apply cloud-native concepts beyond cloud-native. And our harmony sets the basis that good engineering can lead to good security. It's all about using the right instrument to hit the right notes. And this, this lifts security expectations across all open source ecosystems and permits, permits security professionals to extend security left to the source code and development lifecycle, while also forward to emergent technologies such as artificial intelligence, where security is not quite really defined yet. So what does this actually look like? Where we're talking about artificial intelligence, data, models, development, how can we actually apply these security principles to it? Now, I've thrown some questions up on the slide that we could use to explore and start ex asking about how security can achieve some of these outcomes. How and where can you control access to the model, particularly along its development lifecycle? How can access be verified and enforced? What is declared and observable about those models, but also transparent to you as an end user of those systems? What behaviors can we observe and detect, such as maliciousness or malfeasance, combining security with safety, a new and emerging area? But this isn't just limited to AI. We can apply these concepts um, to any other emerging technology, as long as we're thinking about our security symphony. This allows you to ensure that you are riding an innovation wave on the rising security tide. Thank you.